Welcome back to the AMS UBC Cricket Club podcast, the Overcast podcast. Here we have another podcast, but also another ICC tournament lost. Another heartbreak for Team India. It's been over 10 years. Yeah, over 10 years now. And we've lost yet another final, especially a WTC final. Shan, what went wrong? How's your big week? <laughs> Yeah, a lot went wrong. Um, another final, another loss, another heartbreak, like you said. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what's what's going wrong for India. Honestly, I think in these ICC tournaments, uh, we used to take so much pride in winning cups and winning games consistently against big teams. And now I just I just don't think we're able to win those games uh, quite as easily as we used to. But uh, I think going back, we could uh, maybe reflect on some of the things that did go wrong. And of course, people will go back. You know, say he. You know, maybe this could have been different, or maybe we could have done that. Of course, these sort of discussions will happen, but I guess we can just reflect on the things we can. Um, starting from the selection, do you think um, looking at the, the looking at the Aussie lineup, looking at the left-handers they had, four out of the top six were all left-handers. So, do you think India missed the trick by not picking the number one Test bowler like we talked about? Like, did we should we have uh, picked Ashwin? Um, it's easy for us to say in hindsight, to be honest. Um, back when we won the toss and the playing conditions during that time, it was almost as if it's a flashback to the first WTC that we did play Ashwin. And we then felt we missed the trick out. Mm-hmm. But India should have looked at the longer game here and, and we should have played Ashwin purely because of the batting ability. And purely because he's a game-changing bowler, mm-hmm. like um, he's not a weak link. He he'll come in every spell with the same intensity, and he won't go for that many runs. Like even if it's not picking up wickets, it's not turn. It's just holding one end up, and which is a big thing India missed in this test match, especially in day one, mm-hmm. where we couldn't hold an end up. Um, it was consistently being taken away from. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Do you think they should have played Ronald Cut? I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't know. Again, like you said, looking back, it's pretty easy to, to talk about all this in hindsight. But maybe, who knows, if you were to pick Ashwin, the left-handers uh, could have had that uh, challenge to, to face him with that angle that he creates. But again, like the intensity you talked about, I just feel someone like an Ashwin could have been the game-changer because we saw people like uh, Umesh Yadav who to me, it didn't feel like he brought the intensity to the game. Of course, he's been injured and he's been out of the game. You know, he wasn't able to find his group in this match. His pace, I mean, most of the team bowlers in our team, they weren't able to bowl 140 plus consistently. And I think that was a big issue for us, you know. That was the difference I felt. With the Aussie lineup, they were able to bowl 140, 145 with ease. And with the height that they, uh, you know, bowled at, it was pretty difficult for us to face that bounce. But I think one batsman who was able to do well and the one batsman who was a standout for me in the Indian lineup was Ajinkya Rahane. And we talked about him a lot since episode 1, whether he should have been picked or not because of his IPL form. But he showed why and he showed his class in his big game. Uh, how did you look at his innings? You know, What did you think he did well? And uh, yeah, just, just talk to me about, uh, talk to me about Ajinkya Rahane. I think he... He really rose to the occasion. Like he saw the opportunity. He knew that this is his time. This is the time that Indian team has backed him, and it, the cards are down. You know, we were seventy-one for three, and then we were, uh, I think, around five down for one fifty or so when Chideja got out in the first innings. So I think Rane felt. This is his time. Yes, he was fortunate with the bat coming snowball, mm-hmm. and then there's a drop catch as well. But he just looks so determined. Um, he and very calm. Very that's another thing. Normally, players tend to panic in such situations. I know the Aussies. If they were in a similar situation, we would have seen some level of panic. But Rahane was very calm, and his batting partner with him, Shardul Thakur, mm-hmm. that was some innings of grit right. because he, he was hit you know on the body like six times it almost got me a flashbacks <laughs> of the Gabba like oh right. he's playing up with the other like innings right. so like yeah what, what are your thoughts on Shadu Thakur is he the next big all-rounder is he the next big thing lord himself the lord himself yeah I mean 
he's he has been well at the over. I don't know if you look at his stats. It's pretty interesting that after Don Bradman and uh, I think it was Aaron Border, he's the only batsman to have scored I think three consecutive fifties. So I mean, that's that's uh, that's an interesting stat. But yeah, Shardul Thakur came in, showed some fight in that game, and uh, yes, he has ended up in the past. But I think he is a good find for us in that lower middle order because if you look at India since 2022, I think that top order has struggled a lot, and I think that's where the low order. And that importance of Shardul Thakur has become that much more uh, important, I feel, because if you look at since 2022, the top five batters have averaged the lowest amongst you know the, you know, the top team. So I think that's a big concern for us, and that's since uh, you know 2022, like I said. But I think that top order consistency is a big challenge for us, and that is why we we talked about Shardul, we talked about Ashwin, Jadeja, and uh, you know these these players have come up. But again, we can't just keep relying on them to win us games. We need good starts. From the openers, from Kohli, Pujara, who again weren't able to uh, convert their scores and and go on. Uh, you know that was that was a big concern for me. But on the flip side, if you look at the Aussie top five, they were brilliant. I mean, apart from the opening turn, I think Labuschagne did well. But I think Smith and Head were the standout. We talked about Head a lot in the in the previous episode. So how did you look at their innings? You know, what did they do well against Smith Head with that uh, positive outlook? Uh, what do you feel about them? I think um, on this oval wicket, it was very interesting. Wh- whichever batsman came out with playing with intent, mm-hmm. um, almost seemed like the pitch flattened out for them. Okay. So, um, and I think that's why Australia led on day one because um, it's not like the pitch didn't have anything for the bowlers or the Indian bowlers are uh, like uh, somehow bad or not capable. They they are very capable. But it's just that the Australian batsmen said, "No, this is our game. We they took ownership of it. They they held India by the neck almost. Mm. They they knew that if if we get a start here, there's very little India can do to change the game, and that that's exactly what happened. Yeah, such a big total on that kind of wicket. It it made India change and more than Steve Smith's innings. I think it's Travis Head's innings because." India felt clueless on what to do. They came in with a short ball strategy very late in the game. Mm-hmm. It didn't. It was too late. It didn't matter. So India was always chasing the game um, while they were batting, and it it begs the question: Why can't we bat like that? It's not a. It's not a problem of talent or class. It's really a problem of intent. And as we saw in India's chase while um, Shubman Gill and Rohit Sharma were batting. It, it Aussies were clueless, and while Kohli started on day four, he had that same level of intent, and it, the pitch looked flat. So, like, yeah, what do you think we are lacking there? What could it be? I think we were just too defensive right from day one. We weren't, we didn't go in with that attacking sort of mindset. I just didn't feel like we were there to win the game uh, from day one. The intensity was low. You know, our heads were dropping right. When when Smith and Head started after uh, after lunch, I think we just couldn't bring that intensity. And something that we we took pride on, uh, you know, in that Kohli era that we had uh, a few years back. But I, I just don't know like what's going wrong with that intent. Where where that's gone? Um, is it that uh, you know the IPL or the or the scheduling is to be blamed for that fatigue to come in? I, I I'm not sure. And we'll talk about scheduling in a bit. But talking about that intensity the Aussies had. I think someone like Scott Boland, you know, he appears pretty calm and composed, and you know, he doesn't really get riled up too easily. He doesn't get, you know, in in altercations. But him, uh, you know, his bowling was so impressive. I think he was one bowler that we just struggled to bat against. You know, the late the late seam movement of the pitch, his uh, his swing as well was pretty challenging for us. You know, Gill and Pujara got out pretty, uh, you know, in a similar fashion. You know, leaving the ball ball nipping back in. I just didn't feel we were used to those conditions, and we were used to playing someone like him. So, uh, yeah, talk to me about Scott Boland and and the way he's sort of uh, evolved, especially in English conditions. Yeah, um, Scott Boland is like a next gen Ben McGrath. Like, um, he has that one line and he can be hit, and he consistently hit until he, you kind of make a mistake. He forces you to make a mistake, and that's what happened in the second innings against Virat Kohli. Mm-hmm. Um, he forced Virat Kohli to play that shot, um, and of course, a spectacular catch. So, but uh, 
yeah, Scott Boland, it's very, uh, it, I, I, it's very interesting of his comeback to the Australian team. I remember in the 2016 series, mm-hmm. he's part of the Australian wide ball setup. Uh, and in that series, he got hammered, but for obvious reasons, right? right. It's wide ball setup. And uh, I'd like to credit Mr. MS Dhoni for this because he played for Rising, uh, Rising Two next to the Giants, and I'm sure some wisdom was passed. So of everything course. is because of MS Dhoni. Of course. But uh, no, but even Scott Boland, who seemed like the slower of all the bowlers, he was hitting 140. And not to, so if he's hitting 140, Pat Cummins is hitting 145. And Cameron Green with his height, it's even a 130 is equivalent to a very quick ball. So it really comes down to the question that we got paced out, mm-hmm. you know, in the game. We played four seamers, but what was the point of playing those four seamers if none of them could even hit 140, you know, on this kind of wicket? And what do you think the solution to this is? Should we have played a better swing bowler? Should we work on a pace attack? Like, how do you see India coming out of this in terms of their bowling attack? I think we used to take a lot of pride in our seam bowling, you know, outpacing other teams. Especially, again, I remember against South Africa, we went there, we outpaced them. Uh, we went to New Zealand, we out- outpaced them. We went to West Indies. And I think, I don't know what's happened ever since then. Our pace has gone down, consi- like, uh, considerably has, has gone down. I think. Uh, people will look at scheduling, I think, because we, we play so many games in the year. I think our scheduling is so jam-packed that bowlers are not able to recover. They're not able to prepare well for conditions like these where it is uh, it is bowler-friendly, but you've got to play well, you've got to bowl well to use those conditions. So, yeah, I think the scheduling needs to be looked at, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's pretty doable. I think it's pretty uh, easy to, to just rest for a few IPL games. I don't think that'll be a huge issue. And that also will open up, you know, space for new Indian bowlers to come in uh, in the IPL and show their caliber. I think ever since uh, uh, 2013, 14, that period, our IPL has gone up. You know, we've transitioned from yeah. an eight-team IPL to a ten-team IPL. You know, we're playing more cricket than ever. I think, yeah, the scheduling for sure is is um, top priority for me as 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 far as. Uh, you know, improving uh, for the World Cup is concerned or bigger games is concerned. But yeah, uh, I think even some factors like, like luck didn't go away in this game. You know, some calls from the umpire and some tweets that happened afterwards as well. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you think about some of the decisions? Like, what do you think about Gil's uh, catch? Was that out in your opinion? Was that not out? Um, the, and they took some pretty good blinders as well to get a batsman out. So we just couldn't find that luck as well you know everything went their way so what do you what do you think of that yeah um i think luck favors the brave mm-hmm. um and i think australia are the braver team <laughs> they just wanted it more and therefore they brought the blinders it's as simple as that right we can we can sit and debate about that real dismissal but if let's say if that batsman was steve smith mm-hmm. and that catch was taken by jinkya rahane Right? Where would we lie? So Good it's point. it's 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 really a point, matter of you know who wants it more. That edge of Kohli, it flew past Steve Smith, but he took it. He right. grabbed it with both hands, right? So it, it's yes, in, you could say India has been a bit unlucky. There's a lot of inside edges. There's some umpires call which didn't go India's way, but. At the end of the day, if you are that behind the game, where your your kind of win chance depends on luck, that that's the fundamental issue, not luck aspect of it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, Australia, they were so ahead of the game. They constantly, India constantly fought back. At moments, I thought, you know, we could take this game. But Australia was so ahead that even India's numerous attempts to fight back was not enough to be their dominance. So, I think that's something we need to look at um, in terms of um, how we approach these big tournaments in terms of our approach. Because, as it, one argument is like, yes, IPL and franchise cricket in general is kind of ruining these forms of game where we are not sure how to play it or we, we, we are impatient in terms of how to play it. But, um, I just think that 
it's not really an argument in terms of franchise cricket ruining these forms of the game because a big example is Ajinkya Rahane himself mm-hmm. he he performed in franchise cricket and he's performing here so if you keep your fundamentals right i don't think so there's much to argue about um but in in terms of just um commercially and i feel like um in terms of the value of such tournaments yes franchise cricket might be hindering so for bcci they prioritize something like an ipl ahead of a world test championship as of now just because the numbers and it's a business so right. the numbers suggest so and i i want to know your take on this recently um jason roy got a massive contract from the uh, major league cricket um which is going to start in the us so what's your take on this Are, is is the future here and is it a good thing in your opinion yeah it's pretty interesting news coming in uh jason roy he denied an incremental contract from the ecb chose to play in the mlc i think he's going to play for la night riders or something around you know but uh, yeah <laughs> good follows win in in la but yeah look um it's interesting right if players choosing to not play for their countries to play outside people could say oh they're chasing money you know they, they just care about their money but you have to remember like these are players who play cricket for their for their you know living they, it's their job you know they have to earn money they have to do all yeah. to worry about all of that and jason roy has come out and said that he's going to use this opportunity to improve his t20 game and uh, play against different oppositions and to ultimately help his england career right he wants to uh, be back in the england setup he wants to improve his international game so i just feel like you said if it's there's a kahane uh, i think these players are using using franchise cricket to play in in uh, big pressure tournaments and uh, yeah just improve the game and come back in the international setup and improve the country's chances of winning so i, I just i don't think uh, we should be blaming franchise cricket as 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 you know as a whole and talking about jason roy talking about um you know high intensity games we got a very important series coming up um uh, it's the ashes back again this time in england the australia setup will be facing against basketball uh, it could be very interesting to watch how they how they play against each other because because australia you know they they coming up after a pretty impressive win against england last time around but again that was back in australia this time it's in england you know australia will hope to win um the the it hope to be the first team since england in 2010 2011 to win in a way ashes series so i just want to know your thoughts about the ashes tour and how will basketball fare up against the aussie lineup yeah uh, <laughs> basketball is just spectacular mm-hmm. um it's it's surprisingly a uh, a media kind of conceived notion that this is a new form of cricket but right. it's actually not it's no. just it's just they are playing conventional shots <laughs> they are treating the bad balls and because we have named it as such right. any opposition that comes in and plays them is perplexed before even playing the game like um, they are so intimidated by the strategy that oh 590 overs yeah. you know because it, it hasn't been done before and therefore people think it is the impossible but it actually isn't right um so i think it will be interesting though mm-hmm. um because with a bowl, especially like a bowler like scott bowlin like you know uh, often times what england have used very well to their advantage is very good batting conditions and bit bad bowling mm-hmm. to implement basketball but now you have some quality bowlers right, right? you have th- that can bowl line and length consistently so i think it will be a kind of challenge and i think the first test match is the most crucial because it will determine if baseball works or if if england win the first test match i think all teams will start adopting the strategy of playing your game um in in terms of that um yeah like and england are very desperate to make <laughs> sure that this strategy works with their one spinner you know moin ali pulling in uh, the free the coming back to the test team uh each is injured what do you think about that like why are these so desperate measures coming in 
yeah again very interesting news uh, from the english uh, squad i think moin ali pulling uh, like big pull back in the squad after jack leach uh, pulled out because of an injury it's it's interesting because they could have easily picked a domestic spinner you know not forcing ali to come back out of retirement you know he had retired you need to remember he had retired out for out, out of test yeah. cricket so again very interesting but i feel the teams are going for experience over um these x factor players and we get we saw that from india as well picking ks bharat over kishan look i mean i think moin ali brings that experience he has done well for Eng- england for england i think he's a genuine off spinner and uh, provides yeah. a lot of balance uh, in that lower middle order as well and he can obviously continue that fast ball side of thing um yeah yeah i think it's pretty exciting for him to be back i'm not sure how long this will last whether he'll go back into retirement after the series i'm not sure uh but yeah talking about uh, scott bolin we can talk about him first because you mentioned him he has an exceptionally well in england especially against england and against you know teams like india now we saw in the last uh, in the in the game but yeah does he now play in that aussie lineup against england or does a fit josh hazel would replace him i think that's the big question for australia uh, what do you think um i actually in contrariety they they drop stark because um as we saw in this india game warm up um <laughs> they, he stark was going for runs and uh, you know uh, he he, he didn't look in that rhythm per se yes he bowled an absolute snorter to virat kohli in the first innings but it just seems like australia would be better off playing hazelwood and bowling together because now um apart from maybe pat cummins rusty no balls england don't have much of a leeway to like really take on uh, australia and if you bring in stark i know he does get a different ashes form there's something about ashes that really gets him going but i feel like australia shouldn't play that card especially in the first test match so i think um hazelwood and boland you know they'll they'll uh, they'll bowl in tandem especially and it's very it's going to be very exciting yeah what's your england playing in them i think uh, you know that england opening slot has been a big concern for them uh, in that joe root captaincy era i think ever since then they've really stuck to jack crawley uh, he's been able to find his form i think they've tried hami they tried uh, sibbers they've tried uh, rory burns you know they've tried everyone but i think now finally yeah. they've found jack crawley and ben duckett as a pretty solid opening combination they help uh, you know set up a pretty fast scoring template for the rest of the batters so i think crawley and duckett fit into that uh, england uh, lineup pretty easily after that i think uh, ollie pope i think he's done well for them so pope at 3 would be the call for me uh, what do you think about these three and who comes later yeah um definitely i think they'll back these three um and the good thing about baseball anybody can fit into it like it's not you don't need good numbers you don't really need a lot it's just a mindset of play so that's the good flexible thing about england but these have shown again and again that they are so uh, competent in this format so i definitely think they'll come in and then of course root root has kind of elevated his game to to a odi setup not necessarily relentless but he's playing like as if it's a odi game um so uh, root obviously stays at number 4 um i think harry brook will either switch for, between 5 and 6 for me it's either going to be uh, root and brook and then so so it's going to be stoke and then brook i think they'll have to see about that i think they generally yeah. played brook before stoke but again it depends on how stoke is going in the net because he again he's been out of the game didn't play the ipl uh i hardly played the ipl and stoke i think as a skipper just so intimidating although he does say he can bowl he can bowl but for a guy who hasn't bowled for quite some time especially for csk <laughs> um I, i don't know i don't know i, I like there's some uh, is he thing he can bowl off spin like what's going on um, so. yeah i think stokes uh, like you said i think he's pretty intimidating intimidating character i think he said that uh, he'll be fit for that for the ashes tour um i think it's going to be very very interesting to see how he goes whether he bowls how much he bowls so it will be very it's going to be very interesting I think uh, Jordi Besto comes in mm-hmm. and I was I was going to bring it up um like why they haven't picked Oaks because um Oaks hasn't done anything wrong but I think it's just the baseball kind of era they'll either go go in for Moin Ali because they haven't just picked him 
to be in the squad you know he hasn't come out of retirement <laughs> to sit on the bench there's a, there's a case for chris folks but again he's been out of the game as well and i think injury has been a big concern for most of the england uh, uh, team i think a lot of injuries have happened joffre has been out of the game someone like ollie stones is out um, you know and of course anderson broad will be uh, switched around a lot so after after moin ali the bowling lineup will switch around quite a bit but i, I do think it's going to be in the best case scenario it's going to be broad anderson and ali robinson matthew pot the thing is a pretty exciting talent as well so do you how do you see them coming in do you think they'll switch around uh, because anderson said that he will not play more than 3 yeah you bring up they have a variety of options but all of them are very injury prone in my opinion and as you mentioned like they've gone, gone through a few issues they would have seen how india missed out mm-hmm. because of the lack of pace so i don't think so they'll make that same mistake and playing someone like a mark wood or josh stung who can just ramp it up you know and really target the australian batsman especially someone like a travis head with a right. short right. ball right. so i think they would go with this kind of line and my god the batting is deep if you have moin ali coming in at number 8 oh I you know the opposition is in trouble um and not to mention australia's batting is pretty deep as well but this is just one after the other after the other after the other so and given pitches are going to be very flat mm-hmm. it's it's going to be a run fest and it's quite exciting from that perspective what, what do you think of the ashes and how do you think it will go yeah i think it will be very exciting like you said i think the batting line up being so deep and the kind of mentality they have the positive sort of outlook that they bat with a lot of runs i think we're going to see a lot of runs this uh, the series but it's going to be a challenge for australia uh, i think they've they've come off a very exciting test match you know very good win for them but winning in england uh, it's going to be a big challenge i mean there's a reason why they've not been australia has not been able to win away from home um, in a national series but i do see england winning this ashes tour with the sort of uh, positive outlook that they that they're playing with um I think it's going to be very exciting firstly but I think England will win the Ashes too. Uh but again if anything could happen you know Australia is looking really good so do you think there'll be an upset do you think Australia will be the first team since 2010 11 like I said to win an away Ashes too? No I don't think so. I I think Bas was going to take over the world right um because it's it, it just is that clear because Stokes is a very confident captain and I think Cummins despite his win and I know it will sound kind kind of hypocritical but that WTC win was because, just because of day one in my opinion right. because after day one India really even the thing um and I think Cummins does become a bit um or team Australia in general become a bit lost when the game is going away from them so I think England are definitely going to take this. I expect at least one of these innings going to 800. I don't know who will score 800, but I I think there's going to be something like that. Um yeah, I think that concludes it uh, um with uh, our fourth episode now it is uh, of our uh, podcast. We really like the response on the various social media channels and really thank you for like um uh, supporting us uh and yeah thank you isham as well for this uh podcast and if you if you have anything else to add no yeah just thank you again for uh this amazing episode i think we've done well to cover everything uh these four episodes i think <laughs> there's been a lot of cricket so yeah we've done a, we've done a good job so yeah just just uh, follow us on instagram i would say i think we most of our updates come from there we post a lot of stories we've been posting some reels as well to you know hype up the the cricket that's been happening but yeah thank you so much for watching we'll be back with episode 5 soon but yeah let us know if there's anything else that you want us to cover in the comments below on instagram you can hit us up you can email us if you want if that's something that you want to do uh, but yeah uh, thanks for watching like share subscribe all of that thank you thank you